Hey, what's up everybody? This is Easy CNC. Today we'll be doing a full part. So, two operations, uh, a top and a bottom. Uh, it'll have some uh, 3D uh, pocketing with a ball end mill, helix boring, drilling, spot drilling, chamfering, uh, facing, some contouring. It's going to have about just about everything. Okay, so let's just let's get started here. So first, we're going to sketch a plane. We'll go 4 by 4. Hit enter. Finish sketch. Next, extrude. Click on that face. Go up about 1 inch. OK. So we got a nice block, 4 by 4. Next, we'll click on the top face and start sketching. Snap to the middle. Snap to the middle, create a line. Next, snap to the middle again, create a circle. About 2.25, so two and a quarter. Finish that. Now we'll just extrude that circle down. Extrude minus about 0.75. Next, we'll add some fillets. We'll go 300 thou. Those fillets will help us showcase our 3D pocketing. Next, we'll sketch on the face and create some holes with some counterbores. So we'll go about 300 thou down. Over about half inch. Make it about a half inch counterbore. So we're going to make the counterbores first, and then we're going to make the drilled holes second. So make another counterbore over here. 300 thou over. Half inch up. Go about 500 thou. Make this one about 803. Now we're going to zoom up and we're going to select those circles. So hold shift, select the next, hold shift, select the next. Extrude. Minus half inch, okay. All right, next, we're going to snap to the middle, create a quarter inch hole. OK, finish sketch. And we're going to extrude that hole by selecting that face. Minus two inches, make sure it's cutting. OK, went through. Next hole, we're going to uh, create a sketch. Select the face down inside that counterbore. Snap to the middle quarter inch hole. Okay, finish sketch. Next, select the face. Extrude, minus two inches. Okay, next, create sketch. Snap to the middle, quarter inch hole. Finish sketch. Select that face, extrude, minus two inches. Okay, so we got ourselves a part here. Pretty unique looking. Next, we'll go to manufacture. Go selected point. We'll select the top left point. Make sure our Z is facing the correct direction, X's and Y. Okay, side offset about a ooh, eighth of an inch. Top offset about ten thou. We're taking off the top. Next, we will be doing a facing operation. So we use a three inch face mill that I have. OK, 
Okay, just like that, three inches. That looks good. Hit OK. Now I got some speeds and feeds from the engineer at the company I bought this from. And so we're going to run it at 4,000 RPM and 40 inches a minute. That looks good. Passes, linking, that's all double checked. Hit OK. That looks good. Next, we're going to contour around the part. We use a half inch end mill. Type in a half inch. That looks good. Show link, that all looks good. Hit OK. Now we're going to add a finish pass. So we'll do multiple finish passes and we'll just step over at 5 thou. Now time for some speeds and feeds. Type in our info, three teeth. Or thou, inch per tooth, 12 L inch per rev, 9,167 RPM, 110 inches a minute. So pretty quick. The website we use is easyspeedsandfeeds.com. Okay, so we're going to type in our info 110, 110, 110, plunge at 10 inches a minute. Hit OK. Now we're going to zoom up and make sure we have that finish pass. That's important so we have a nice finish on our part. Make the customer happy. OK. Next, we're going to do some pocketing. And we're just going to select um, go over to geometry. And select that bottom pocket. We're, this is mostly kind of like a roughing um, tool path just to get rid of some of the stocks so our ball in mill doesn't have to do so much work. Okay, so that looks good. It's going to helix down in there and then take a couple contour passes. We're going to duplicate that pocket, edit it, go to geometry, deselect that chain and then select that chain right there, hit OK, and now that's going to take out most of the stock in that pocket. That's important so our, our ball end mill doesn't have to do a ton of work. Next we're going to do a helix bore with that half inch end mill. Okay, looks good. After that, some more helix boring for those counter bores. Select that and select that. Now those are half inch counter bores, so our half inch end mill will not work. We need to use a different end mill. So we're going to try a 3 8 3 7 5, okay, that looks good. Alright, we're going to add some speeds and feeds. About 900 surface feet, 0.375. Now you can go more surface feet, but we only have a 10,000 RPM spindle we're working with, so we're going to keep around 900. About 9,000 inch per rev, 82 inches a minute. It's nice and quick. It's what we like. Nine one six seven. Okay. 82, 82, 82, 82 inches per minute, and 10. Okay, so awesome, it's making sp
All right, so next we're gonna do some ball end milling. We'll choose a 3D pocket. First, uh, we're gonna make a half inch ball end mill. Half inch, that works. Okay. I'll do silhouette. Select those two boundaries. Now right here, I actually do the wrong type of 3D toolpath. And we'll fix it afterwards, but you see that? There's way too many tool uh, too many passes in there. So we'll fix that later. Next, we'll do some spot drilling. We'll make a spot drill. Okay. 375, 38 spot drill, that should work. go down to not whole bottom we want to do to chamfer width and we go 10 thou that'll give it a nice spot before it was just drilling all the way through now it's just going to spot it to about 270 thou diameter next we're going to uh, drill the through holes we'll make a quarter inch drill real quick quarter inch and we will drill through so we're going to put minus hundred thou and select the drill tip through okay that should work we're going to check that out going all the way through, that's what we like. So we're gonna change it to chip breaking. Go about 50 thou per peck, and we'll retract after about, um, let's do 150 thou. So three pecks and then retract. Okay. We're going to go back to our spot drill and add some speeds and feeds. We forgot this step. Okay. Speeds and feeds. We have a high speed spot drill that's 3 8. That works. 400 surface feet. 4,074 RPM. Cutting feed at uh, seventh thou, that works. So we'll type in our info real quick, 4,074, 29, change that to 40, retract to 40, that works. Now I'll add some speeds and feeds for the drill. And the website we use is easyspeedsandfeeds.com. But if you have a, a better speed and feed calculator, feel free to use that or contact your tool uh, provider directly. They usually have pretty good speeds and feeds. So we got 6,112 RPM feeding at 24 for our high speed drill. Hit OK, if that works. Now we're going to add chamfer, chamfer the outside, and chamfer all those counter bores. Okay, we'll make a quick tool, quarter inch chamfer tool. 
go down to chamfer mill, quarter inch, 5,000 tip diameter. Okay. So I'll add some speeds and fees real quick and we'll be just about done with the top face. Nine thousand one hundred sixty seven, fifty five inches a minute, plunging at ten inches a minute. Put twenty thou chamfers instead of forty, hit OK. There we go. Now we're going to simulate it. Hit play. Here's our face mill. That looks good. Half a gen mill going around the outside. Roughing it. Now a finish pass. That's important. Give it a nice finish. Next, we're roughing in the insides. Helixing down. Contouring it out. Helix down. Contour it out. That looks good. Helix boring this counter bore. Helix boring these counter bores with the 3 8 end mill we made. Next is the ball end mill. Now we we did this wrong actually. See how many passes it's taking? That's wrong, and I notice it and we we remake the toolpath after this. That just takes way too long, cutting way too much air. Okay, so let's fix that uh, 3D pocket real quick. So, we're examining it and we're thinking about it and we will make a different 3D pocket. One that has far less passes and just generally looks a lot better. Okay. Go 3D. And we're going to examine our options. Ramp looks a little bit better. So we'll try this again. We'll try that out and then examine the toolpath and see how it works. Choose our ball end mill. Make sure that's that's chosen. Okay, that looks a lot better. The other one looked like it had a thousand passes. This one looks like it has about 20. Go back to simulate, double check it, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. Yeah, this is looking a lot better than what we had before. And that's just kind of how it is in Fusion. I mean, you can, there's so many options when it comes to doing 3D pockets that you may choose the wrong one at first, but if you go into simulation and examine it, you can quickly see what you did wrong, switch in something that works, and, and then just keep going. You're not going to get everything right your first attempt, so it's, it's okay to experiment a little bit. Okay, so we we put our tool path back in the correct order. Now we're just going to watch the whole thing real quick. Make sure everything looks good. Okay, that looks good. Here's our ball end mill. Going to work. Now when we take small passes with ball end mills, that will give a much better finish. So. 
It takes a while, but you'll get a great finish if you do tiny little passes. Okay, we'll add some speeds and feeds to our ball in now. About 12 thou, that works. 4,584. Back to fusion. Fifty five, fifty five, fifty five. Plunge at ten, okay. So that looks good. Our first side is looking good. We have the proper pocketing routine for our 3D pocket. And now we're gonna move on to the next side. So this is a block part, so it's pretty easy. We can grab whatever side we want. We'll just grab that corner. Make sure our Z is facing the correct direction. It needs to be facing up. We'll flip our Z. Make sure our X is facing the correct direction. We'll flip our X also. After we examine it, yep, flip our X. That looks good. Ready for our second op. There is no side stop because we did that contour with a half inch end mill in our first operation. But there is about a quarter inch of bottom stock. That's what we were holding on to in our first stop. So we're not going to take that off with the three inch face mill. We're going to try to go a lot faster and take it off with a half inch end mill and then leave about five thou for our three inch face mill to clean up. So we selected our half inch end mill from operation one. Get some speeds and feeds in there. About 1,200 surface feet. Nine thousand one hundred sixty-seven RPM, one hundred and ten inches a minute. Okay, one hundred and ten, one hundred and ten inches a minute. Fill this out. Hit OK. All right. We'll double check and make sure that we're leaving some stock. We weren't, so we'll select it. It's leaving about four, that works. Now we'll add another facing operation. And we'll use that three inch face mill. This will give it a nice, clean finish. One about 4,000 RPM, 40 inches a minute. Those are some speeds and feeds I got from the engineer who works at the company I bought the tool from. Finish filling that out. 40 inches, 40 inches, 40 inches a minute. We plunge at 10. Awesome, that looks good. Next, we have to spot the holes. On the back side and select the proper tool which is that 3 8 spot drill go back down and not through the hole but to the chamfer width that's important otherwise you try to go all the way through the part about 10 thou chamfer width now we're going to apply some speeds and feeds Okay, 0.375, 400, this is a high speed spot drill, we're drilling some aluminum, we're pretending our block is aluminum, okay, about 6 thou, okay, so it's 4,074, and about, what was it, it was 24 inches a minute, okay. So 
quick set real quick. We typed in our numbers wrong. 4,074, 24 inches a minute. Retract about 40. That works. It's drilling. Okay, that's what we want. Hit OK. Next, we'll do some 2D chamfering, just the outside. Back to speeds and feeds. Quarter inch end mill. I need to use a lower surface footage just because our spindle max is 10,000. 10, so. So 6,000 inches per rev gives us about 55 inches a minute. Okay, so 9,167 spindle speed, 55 inches a minute. Type that all in and looks like it made a good toolpath. Next, we're going to do some simulation. We're just going to Watch and make sure it's doing what we want it to do. Okay, that's looking good. It is facing it with a half inch end mill, leaving five thou for our three inch face mill. That's kind of like a rough facing operation. Okay, next, it's gonna take a finish cut on that face. Next, spot drilling those holes. Deburr, this will deburr them. Finally, Chamfer mill on the outside. And there you have it. There's our uh, our simple part. Um, covered just.